Speaker number nine is Lawson Graham. Lawson is a grade 11 student at St. George School in Vancouver and is passionate about sports, school, and more importantly, our future. Specifically, how to achieve food, water, and energy for the future. For the last three summers, Lawson has volunteered as an internet, internet communications consultant, collaborating on a broad range of pro projects. In 2019, Lawson was selected to present his plan for a productivity enhancing mobile phone software at the Dragon's Lair Business Competition. There is much more that this young man has accomplished, but we simply don't have time. But please welcome Lawson Graham. Thank you. Good evening. I'm here to tell you all that actions speak louder than words, and my talk will be about action. You see, by 2050, there will be around 9 billion people living on the planet, which means we won't have enough food to go around, and my generation will be the ones who are struggling for any sort of food or future. And so you see, we have to take action now, we have to collaborate and ideate to save our planet, and we have to do it through projects like the 2030 Project. The 2030 Project is all about connecting youths to industry leaders through the usage. It's all about connecting youths to industry le leaders, and this will be done through idea generation, which can be funded, tested, and implicated within a matter of days, and thus er, innovation can be rapid. This innovation will be done through our youth-led innovation centers. These centers will utilize uh, events called idea sprints, which are 24 to 48 hour problem solving marathons. In these marathon marathons, there will be winning ideas, which will then be tested and implemented at our own small scale innovation labs. And from there, these, these ideas that are successful will then be spread out throughout all problem solving centers. And we will be able to continually generate new, brand new relevant ideas. So at this point, we already have one prototype center built, and that's at St. George's School. And so here we already have six months planned out, where on February 18th, we'll be running our first ever idea sprint. On March 10th, we will actually be building our own sustainable greenhouse, which will be our testing facility, as supplied by BW Global, a local business in Abbotsford. And on May 18th, we will actually be testing all these products that have been generated in our idea sprint and, and actually tested in our greenhouse. So TEDx's theme of charity completely relates to my project due to the fact that by definition, my project's goal is to set out plans and ideas that will be clear for the future. Not only this, but the entirety of the Fraser Valley also stands to benefit from a project like this due to the fact that it's focused, the businesses and communities are all focused around the agricultural community and economy. And so it makes sense to connect youths to some of the, le to some of the leading minds at agritech companies such as BW Global, Monsanto, and, uh, and, that's, and that's the two of them. So with this, they can work together and thus be able to generate brand new ideas that can fend off this looming problem of food security in the Fraser Valley, and not only that, but the world. So you see, today, we need to take action. We need to listen to those who have spoken before us and identify this problem. And we need to do it through groundbreaking ideas that will change the status quo. I came here today because this is an idea that's just not worth sharing. It's an idea that must be shared. And in sharing, I ask that each and every one of you can begin to engage in this project, whether through uh, participation, partnership, or simply connection. Our world is going to be facing a huge problem in our future. And I ask that each of you will join me in taking action. Thank you. Well done, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mary wanted me to ask you a question about sports, but I'm going oh, to ask you to something. Answer. Yeah, that's too easy. <laughs> so I'll ask you something else. Um, with in the past, many young people got into agriculture, got into farming because they lived on the family farm or they had a tie to the family farm. And now with family farms going away, young people don't have that opportunity to just 
take to it naturally. And you're encouraging young people to invest time and effort into what you're talking about. How do you attract those young people to do that? Well, I think the attraction really just comes from the fact that we've got to live somewhere in the future. And so sustainable farming is kind of that, it's got that appeal of that farming had in the, in the past. But it's just with sustainable farming, we can farm while still having a future to live off of. And so it's really incentivizing people to just, if you feel like you want to live in a place that we have a strong, solid foundation for a future in, then people will naturally be like brought towards this idea of sustainable farming. Great, thank you. Thank you. That's speaker number nine.